I'm going to be looking at dinosaurs, so can you tell me some names of different dinosaurs that you guys might well know? What can you come up with? Yes. Brachiosaurus. That's a good stuff. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold it. Let's just stick. Very, very good. Let's stick with Brachiosaurus. That's fantastic. A good leaf-eating dinosaur. Um, at the back, what can you come up with? T-Rex. Yeah, T-Rex. One of our big meat-eating dinosaurs, which lived a long time ago. Fantastic. Yeah. Diplodocus. Yeah, Diplodocus, one of our leaf-eating dinosaurs, again with a long neck and big body. Another one. Argentinosaurus, the biggest dinosaur yeah, ever. Yeah, exactly. We're going to look at him in a little bit, but Argentinosaurus, one of our biggest dinosaurs. So, a couple more. Velociraptor. Velociraptor, one of our meat-eating dinosaurs. Triceratops with three horns, fantastic. Pop your hands down now. So dinosaurs, there's lots and lots of different dinosaurs, probably up to about a thousand different types of dinosaurs, and they're found all around the world. And at the moment, we're finding lots of dinosaurs in this part of the world, this is China. And at the moment, scientists are finding lots of what we call dino birds. So this fossil here shows us a feather, but that's not a real kind of fluffy feather that you could blow with or fly with now this is actually part of the stone that has been found in in China and there was lots of creatures that used to live called dino birds and this is where they started to develop feathers this what these ones here have got stripy feathered tails for example and when you look at their fossils you can actually see the stripes on the tail you've got dark bands and then you've got lighter colored bands and those represent feathers so China's very excited mate, because of the fact that they're doing lots of digging and finding lots of links between dinosaurs changing into birds over millions of years. What do we call these, these rocks containing these animals? Fossils, yes, that's right, it's a bit confusing. So they are fossils and they are rocks, but, but the actual fact that they're remains of a creature from a long time ago makes them a fossil. But it may not just be an animal, it may be a plant, for example. It may be like a tree, for example, that's also become a fossil. And can any of you tell me how an animal, a dead animal, goes from being a dead animal to becoming a fossil? Can any of you tell me what goes on? Yeah. Because all the dinosaurs were extinct a long time ago, and then over all the years, there were different layers of the earth, and then they got trapped in those layer. Excellent, yes. So when, when an animal's died, like a dinosaur's died, the really important thing is that it's very quickly become covered over in layers of mud and earth. Fantastic. Anybody else add to that? Yeah? It's been so buried and buried and buried, I mean, it's turned into stone from being buried from all of those years. Exactly. So that's the next key thing, the fact that they've been buried, but over a very long period of time. And so we've got our dinosaur dying first of all. There he is, having his last breath underwater. Then what you were saying about getting covered in layers of rocks and lots of time, and then millions and millions of years later, those bones might suddenly come to the surface. And that might be through natural means. So it could be the sea, for example, waves bashing against those rocks and revealing those bones. Or here, for example, in North Bristol, going into South Gloucestershire, we have lots of things called quarries. That might be a new word for some of you, but don't know if you know what a quarry might be. Or what happens in a quarry? Any ideas? What do you reckon? Where rocks are. Where rocks are, that's right. Or where rocks are sort of exploded and removed to make roads and buildings. That's right. And it's in quarries. We've got lots of quarries around this part of Bristol, but they might well find some dinosaur bones. Now dinosaurs come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Now on this picture here I've got a person because I want you guys to see how much bigger these dinosaurs are than a person. So here's a person down here and our largest dinosaur that ever roamed the earth over on the left there is called Argentinosaurus. But here's Argentinosaurus. He'd be as long as your school and as probably as tall as your school. Very big dinosaur indeed. Any ideas which country he might be from? Think of the name, Argentina. Argentina. That's right, in South America. And he was big, he's probably as big as your school and probably as tall as your school as well. So he was a very big dinosaur. We've got Parasolopha, T-Rex, much bigger than a person, for example. But not all dinosaurs were big. Yeah. Here's a person and here's a small dinosaur. This one is called Compsonathus. And actually in China, they've since found even smaller dinosaurs that are perhaps only about 20 centimetres long. He was so small, you could probably take him, for, if he was alive today, you could probably take him for a little walk around St George. 
So it's a very small dinosaur, and he'd probably snap at your, your ankles there if he was alive today. What's the word that we call the fact that they've all disappeared, there's no more of them around? Yeah. They're extinct, that's right, they're extinct. Extinction. extinction went on, that's right. There's been lots of extinctions going over time, but particularly with dinosaurs all dying out, exactly. Now, how many of you watched Deadly 60 or Live and Deadly? Yeah. Lots of you, fantastic. I've watched Jurassic Park. Well, Jurassic Park's yeah, good yeah, too. I... Well, pop your hands then. The reason I said Deadly 60 is because I want you to think about creatures that are alive today rather than creatures that are extinct. And there's lots of animals alive today, and a little bit of a clue in how I say this, because they have scaly skin. And they're animals that are alive today that are similar to dinosaurs. They're not dinosaurs, but similar. What sort of creatures can you think of? What sort of things? Yeah. Snakes are one, yes, I gave you a clue in how I was saying scaly skin. Can you think of something? A lizard, yes, a lizard's a good one with, its, with of course, its legs, unlike a snake, which is legless. Crocodile? crocodile, yes, a crocodile is a fantastic um, example. They have indeed. Crocodiles have been around since the dinosaurs and they've changed very little in that time as well. What about has a shell on its back? Not a snail, but something turtle. that might... A turtle, yeah. perhaps? Or something that lives on land? It's very slow. A tortoise, thank you very much. So all these animals we've just talked about are called reptiles. They're all alive today. Here are dinosaurs, they're all extinct. And there are differences in how they used to stand. So dinosaurs used to stand with very straight arms, and reptiles today stand with very sprawling arms. Their arms go out and then down. So what I'd like you guys to do is to find yourself a space and pretend you're doing a press-up with very straight arms like a dinosaur to begin with. I'm going to do it with you. So find yourself a space and let's all have some very straight arms like a dinosaur to begin with. Now if we're to be a reptile like a lizard today, I want you to put your hands slightly apart and bend your elbows so your elbows are pointing outwards. That's it, some very good lizard there, fantastic. It's a bit harder to do, isn't it? And let's all be a T-Rex, so very straight arms. And now let's be hmm, a chameleon on a twig. So crouch your arms, point those elbows out. And what shall we be now? Triceratops with some very straight arms. That's it, very good. Excellent. So there are some big differences between reptiles which are alive today and dinosaurs which used to be alive a long time ago.